I've been naturally meditating on the readings this week in light of the pro-life march and the other pro-life activities that have been going on this weekend. And I heard this on NPR. They described the war- march in Washington as, um, quote, an anti- the anti-abortion rally they call the pro-life march. Unquote. And I know they're under re- restrictions as to how they can talk about these things. They have pretty strict rules uh, at NPR so that they are as unbiased as possible. But even though we might think that that phrase doesn't completely describe or maybe most accurately describe what we think of as the march, it does contain the two elements that we do want to get across. We are against abortion, but we are also pro-life in all its forms. And Jonah is sent to Nineveh, and he's sent to tell to say to the Ninevites this word, repent. Repent is a, comes from a Greek word. It means, you know, change your mind or change your thinking. But it also uh, carries with, with it the idea of changing behavior. And so Jonah is sent to the Ninevites to tell them to change their behavior, change how they're thinking. And some say we should not talk about abortion in this way. We should not talk about the wrong or the evil of abortion because it may hurt those who have had abortions. But we cannot avoid calling wrong something that is wrong. Jesus himself, if you remember his conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well, in his comment to her, you're right to say that you have no husband, for you have had five, and the man you're with now is not your husband. You know, it's pretty in your face, right? But we know Jesus didn't say that out of cruelty or hatred or um, harshness. He said that to confront her with her behaviors so she had an opportunity to change. And Jesus himself begins his ministry with the word repent, you know. So we do, we say repent. And first we say it to the women and men who have chosen abortion, either because they saw it as okay or as the best solution they could come up with to a difficulty. We say to them, repent. Turn back to God. Tell him of your sorrow. Let his loving mercy and forgiveness flow over you and through you. Repent there is not a harsh word, it's a loving word. But we also say to abortion providers, repent. Change your behavior. You know, it's not good for the children, it's not good for the parents, it's not good for you, and it's certainly not good for society. And we say to our elected officials and others who promote abortion, repent, change that behavior. But repent isn't the only word we say, right? Jesus says, begins his ministry, yes, repent. But then he says, and believe in the gospel. So we have another word after repent, We say, believe in the gospel of life. God has given us this word to say, you know, that life is precious. You know, it's of infinite dignity. And uh, it might be a, a life that you can't see. It might be a child in the womb. But that life is precious. It doesn't matter. It could be a criminal. And we say, that life is still has dignity. It might be an elderly person who maybe isn't contributing as much 
as they used to. It might be someone close to death. It might be the poor who is a drain, who are a drain on society, so to speak. It doesn't matter. All human life, in whatever form or shape it takes, is precious. Those lives, those people who don't look like we look, don't act like we look, their lives still have dignity. And yes, we might have to punish the criminal, but we can't abuse the criminal. We might have to send some immigrants back to their country of origin, but while they're here, we care for them. And we don't send them back to places where their lives will be in true danger. You know. Whoever it is, their life is precious and has great dignity. And so we not only have to learn that ourselves, but we have to speak that word to the world. Believe in the gospel of life. Now I was thinking about Jonah. I love this line in that first reading. <clears throat> Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to walk through it. Now I was comparing it to Fort Thomas. What does it take? What would it take us? Two hours to walk through Fort Thomas? You know. So you know if you were getting ready to walk through this enormous city, it would seem like an enormous task. You know. And so for us, this task of changing what has become a culture of death, a very secular culture, into a culture that respects life and promotes life may seem like an enormous task to us. But notice, Jonah's task wasn't to change their hearts. Jonah's, Jonah's task was only to speak the word God gave him to say. And so it's not our task to change everyone's hearts. It's only our task to witness to what God has given us to say. The other thing that strikes me is, you know, it's been, what, 45 years since Roe versus Wade. And you might think, ah, oh, it's been so long, it's never going to change, whatever, and get discouraged but now I think of Jesus in the gospel calling Simon and Andrew and, and uh, James and John, you know. And I think of, of Paul. Jesus later calls Paul to be his apostle. And they went through the world, especially Paul, trying to go through the whole world, preaching the gospel, bringing people to Christ. We may not see the end of our efforts in our lifetime. Roe versus Wade may not be changed. We might not see the culture come to a, a complete turnaround and be a culture of life in our lifetime. It doesn't matter, at least in, in this sense. I mean, it matters to the world, but not to our calling. The apostles worked all their lives and didn't see the end of their efforts but they spent their lives doing the task that God gave them. And so we too cannot get discouraged. So what if we spend the rest of our lives speaking this word? It's possible we won't have completed our task before we die. But along the way, we'll have done good. Paul and Peter and the other apostles didn't convert everyone, but it wasn't in their power to convert everyone. But they did bring some to conversion. And so it is with us. We may not change the whole culture, but we are changing some lives. I read that the number of, abort of abortions is going down. And we are bringing some women and men to healing. We are stopping some abortions. Federal funding for abortion in this country is at risk. We are making some difference. Here and there along the way, some lives are being changed. 
Some people are hearing the word. Some people are turning to God. Some people are changing their behaviors. So let's not be discouraged. Let's never stop. Let's continue to speak both of our words to the world. Repent. Change your behavior. Stop this behavior of abortion. And then further, believe in the gospel of life. That all human life has great dignity and is precious. And should be cared for and promoted. As long as we're faithful to our task, we'll be doing what God wants us to do. Whether a particular life is changed or when lives are changed is up to the people hearing our word and is up to God.